In the dictionary, underdog is defined as a person or group in a competition, usually in sports and creative works, who is expected to lose. But why? How is one team determined to be the underdog? Is it measured by the numbers the team puts up, the size of the school, maybe how experienced the team is, or how good their coaching is? I believe that all of these are contributing factors to determine the underdog in a competition, but I think the question that is asked more frequently is, do these teams deserve a highly coveted spot in the college football playoff? Some seem to think that they deserve a shot, while others think they don't stand a chance. In this video, I'm going to try my best to explain why both arguments are not completely wrong, but also not completely right. Guys, before we get into the video, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, if you enjoy the content that I put out. It would mean a lot to me and would help the channel to grow. Now let's get into the video. In the past couple of years, but especially this year, which is 2020, underdog teams have become such a big thing in college football with teams like BYU, Cincinnati, and Coastal Carolina. Arguments as to which of these teams, if any, deserve to be in the college football playoff are more relevant than ever. And though many people have expressed their strong opinion about what each team deserves, no one is totally right or totally correct because there's no way to decide who is right or wrong. What I'm going to be doing in this video is showing you guys past underdog teams and what their seasons turned out to be in order to show you the likeliness of underdog teams now and in the future getting a shot at a championship. First, we're going to start with the 2007 Hawaii Warriors. This team was led by Colt Brennan and they were incredibly good. June Jones was the coach of this team and is also the coach who revolutionized the run and shoot offense which was meant to rack up passing yards and points in bunches and he had just the guy to do it with, Cole Brennan. This is a man who didn't have many scholarships, but did have one to San Jose State. However, he passed it up to walk onto Hawaii. So you can see that he was committed to this team from the start. With June Jones' explosive offense and Cole Brennan's ability and talent, this team went on a rampage throughout the entire season, outscoring their opponents 564 to 331, and earned a trip to the Sugar Bowl against the Georgia Bulldogs, where their inevitable fall would happen. In this game, Cole Brennan was 22 for 38 and threw for 169 yards and 3 interceptions. He also rushed for negative 38 yards and basically just hit a brick wall going up against the Georgia defense. When you look back on this team's year, the toughest team they played, besides Georgia, was the 17th ranked Boise State Broncos in the WAC Championship. They beat them by 8 points which isn't a very close game but it also isn't that convincing. They also beat an unranked Washington team by only a touchdown which is a great accomplishment but doesn't really convince anyone that they should have been playing in a tougher game than what they played in, which was the Sugar Bowl. This team, when given a chance against a much better opponent, failed miserably, which I think is evidence enough that they did not deserve a chance better than what they were given. Next, we have the 2017 UCF Knights. In 2015, this team went 0-12. Not even three years later, this team ends with an undefeated record, which is one of, if not the biggest turnaround for a team ever. Led by Shaquem Griffin and Mackenzie Milton, this team would not be denied as they went on a tear throughout the entire season and ended it with a great three-game streak where they beat 22nd ranked South Florida, 16th ranked Memphis, and 7th ranked Auburn in the Peach Bowl. This team proved themselves week after week and took down every opponent who played against them. They even crowned themselves national champions since they beat Auburn, who beat both teams that made it to the national championship that year, Alabama and Georgia. The thing we can take away from this team is that unlike Hawaii, they knocked down every opponent they played against, including a tough armor team in the very last game. It's safe to say this team proved they were more deserving than playing in the Peach Bowl and could have possibly swiped the fourth spot in the college football playoff just to get a chance. However, no one could have boldly predicted that they would have beat Auburn in the Peach Bowl and without that victory, I don't think they had a shot at being considered for the fourth spot, so it really depends on your judgment. When it was all said and done though, I think this team deserved to play in a bigger game than the Peach Bowl. Third, we're going to look at the 2015 Houston Cougars. This team was led by an insane dual threat quarterback named Greg Ward Jr. This guy went off that year as he had close to 3,000 pass yards at 2,827 and 1,114 rush yards, scoring a total of 38 touchdowns, 17 passing and 21 rushing. Now, Houston is known for their air raid offense, and everyone knows how effective that can be when you execute it right. However, when you have a guy like Greg Ward Jr. behind center for your team, it's incredibly tempting to give him plenty of rushes because he's just that talented. 
In short, he was a nightmare for teams to deal with and in my opinion is one of the most underrated football players ever. Talking more specifically about the team and their success, this team was great and with the help of Greg Ward Jr. almost pulled off an undefeated season. But their fall came on November 21st, 2015 when they played the Yukon Huskies. There are multiple reasons why this team lost, but the main one is that Greg Ward Jr. was not playing in the game until the last few minutes of the fourth quarter. When I tried to find out why he wasn't playing, I figured out that he sustained an ankle injury the week prior in the game against Memphis. It was said by his coach Tom Herman that he looked fine for the UConn game and was expected to start, but he ended up not starting so either the ankle injury was worse than they thought or something else prevented him from starting. Now, their backup QB, Kyle Postma, was just not very good, or at least didn't have a very good game. He had multiple turnovers which were huge contributing factors to their loss. Nevertheless, you do have to give Houston some credit as they ended on an impressive three game win streak, beating 16th ranked Navy, 20th ranked Temple, and 9th ranked Florida State in the Peach Bowl. A very similar three game win streak to that of UCF's in 2017. This team overall was very talented and knew how to win games. Without that one slip up against UConn, they would have had an incredible season as they would have gone undefeated. The thing is, it sucks that their one bad game had to come against a team that they should have beaten opposed to a loss against a much tougher opponent. That's the thing about these smaller schools is that if you want any shot at being considered for a national title, you must go undefeated. There's no possible way you're going to be truly considered to have a real shot at something if you lose even one game like Houston did. In my opinion, I think this team deserved to be right where they ended, which was number 8 in the final AP poll since they beat a tough Florida State team in the Peach Bowl. But who knows, without that one loss to UConn, their season could have turned out much differently. The fourth and final team that we're going to look at is the 2010 Boise State Broncos. Out of all the teams we've looked at thus far, this team is the best as they reached as high as number 2 in the AP poll and had the highest shot at a national championship than any other team we've looked at. I'm sure most of you watching this video are aware of Boise State's success in the late 2000s and early 2010s. They were led by one of the most unathletic looking quarterbacks ever in Kellen Moore, but when he was on the field he got the job done. The number that defines this man's career at Boise State is 50-3, which was his record and means that he averaged around 12.5 wins a year every year that he was there, which is just incredible. But now we're going to shift our focus to that 2010 season. In that season, Boise looked very impressive as they made it through 10 weeks without one loss, but on November 26, 2010, they traveled to Nevada and lost the game that would ruin their national championship hopes. I want you guys to see how close they came to winning this game so that you can experience how heartbroken they must have been. So for some reference, Boise State was up 24-7 towards the end of the third quarter, but Nevada made an amazing comeback and scored a late fourth quarter touchdown with 14 seconds to go. And then this happened. Moore steps up, airs it out, looking for Titus Young. Did he catch it? Diving catch with one second to go. Unbelievable. He's Superman and don't drop it. How in the world did he? Black special team player of the week, a senior. Now it's time for Brodsman to deliver. This from 26. No good! The drama continues in Reno. We are going to overtime! Wide open was Avery for a first down for Boise. Oh, they mixed him up. Martin and Avery both in on third and goal from the 12th. Complete. Young got his hands up and the ball bounced. 
This is turning into a disaster for Grotzman. He misses from 26. What kept the field goal? Keep it on the ground with Tower. He muscles ahead inside the 20. So, it is now the time. Chris Peterson. Instead, it is Martino. So as you can see, Boise State came about as close as you can to having an undefeated season and possibly earning a trip to the national championship. This team was very talented, but like two of the three teams we've looked at thus far, they had one loss that ruined any chance of getting to the championship game. Overall, I think this team deserved a shot at a national championship, and had they not lost that game against Nevada, I believe they could have gotten that shot. So after looking at all of these teams, I think that the decision to give any of these teams a shot at a championship comes down to two things. The team's strength of schedule and how good or bad the teams above them do during that year. Let's take the 2017 UCF team that we looked at for example. If you look at the final AP poll for that year, you'll see that UCF was the only undefeated team in the top 25, yet they were ranked at number 6. So when UCF overcame every single challenge and beat every single opponent that went up against them that year, their efforts, according to the voters of the AP poll, were only worth the number 6 spot in the rankings, and that they were not as good as the two two-loss teams above them. And you know why? Because the teams that were ranked above them are bigger programs, who play better opponents, therefore they have more room for error, opposed to schools like UCF, who have absolutely no room for error. But that's the thing, even when you go undefeated, you are still not considered a top dog in college football and that's why it's virtually impossible to get a shot at a national championship. But then we look at the Boise State team in 2010 and see that at one point they held the number 2 ranking in the country. That's because the previous two years they had gone 12-1 and 14-0, and which means that before their loss in Nevada in 2010, they had only lost one game since 2008. They had proven themselves for two years straight that they could compete with the top teams, yet it was only this year that they really had a shot at a championship, because when you're a small school, that's how long it takes. Two years to convince the voters of the AP poll that you deserve a shot at a championship. So when they lost that game against Nevada, all of the progress that they had made over those two years in willing their way to a championship had been lost, all because of one very close game that went into overtime. In conclusion, when you're a small school, it's virtually impossible to play in the national championship game, and unless you can prove yourself to be worthy of a shot over the course of a couple years, you've no chance at all to play in the championship. Alright guys, I want to thank you guys for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, I would appreciate it if you guys liked the video and subscribed to my channel. Besides that, until next time.